Well, hello, beautiful Calgary people. I love seeing you. I'm a born and raised Calgarian, so it's great to be here and to be able to share my... Yes, right? Woo, woo, woo. So think to yourself for a moment about a time when you faced that perfectionist inside of you, when a voice inside your head or inside of your heart said, you're not good enough, other people are going to judge you. you, you can't do it. I'm not going to make you raise your hands because I know being a recovering perfectionist, that's kind of a scary thing to do. Am I going to hold my hand upright? Are people going to look at me? Are people going to judge me? Yes, take it in, take it in. One thing that was not in my bio is that fact that I am a recovering perfectionist. It's something that I've struggled with my entire life. It's something that I struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis as a business owner, as a parent, and as an athlete. Perfection and excellence are different things. And oftentimes they get put into the same realm, the same spectrum, but for me, they're on complete opposite ends. Perfection is something where you're looking for the external, and excellence is where you're looking for that internal sense. For me, I faced my perfectionist, that demon that lives inside of me on the day that I competed at the Olympic Games. There we go, the little guy's moving there. So the volume is down so I can talk to you about this performance because I think a lot of people don't understand what's going through the mind of an athlete as they're performing at the Olympic Games. Here I was telling myself, be calm, breathe, take a deep breath, you've put in the work, you are ready, you are ready. When you salute that judge, you step onto the floor and you say, make it happen. As I began my routine, I fell into a place of flow where I wasn't thinking anymore and I was just doing. Whip back, one and a half, front full, through to a one and a half, perfect. On the outside, I looked like I was in complete control, but on the inside, I was like, oh God, I got half my routine. Yeah, here we go, rolling. Okay, I made it through. There was a small mistake in there. Here I thought, you are almost there, buddy. You be strong. Keep pointing those toes. Keep that leg straight. I practiced that a thousand times. On this part, this is when I needed to catch my breath. That half turn into the full and hold the splits. One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Turn. Press up into the handstand. And it was like time was slowed down. I swear I counted to 20. One, two. Yeah, no. <laughs> And at this point in my routine, I knew that I was this close to delivering one of the best performances of my life. I had two flips and two twists. It's a double twisting double back. I knew I needed to stick it in order to have a chance to win. And I did. And something, yes, you can, yeah. Now this moment right here with my coach, I'm going to talk about this a bit later. But this routine was the best routine that I could have done in the moment that it mattered the most. And as an athlete, that is the best feeling in the world. But it took me a long time to get here. It took me a long time to get to the place where I could actually stand in the corner of the floor, wait for that judge to salute me, to tell me it was time to go, and to have that positive self-talk inside of my head, to not have that perfectionist jump in and try to make me screw screw up. My story, let's rewind. I wasn't born in 1976. I was born in 1982. But Nadia Komenich, who doesn't remember Nadia? Can you believe it's 40 years this year since Nadia scored that first perfect 1.0 at the Olympic Games? She actually scored a 10. But they didn't have the capability to put a 10 on the scoreboard because no one had ever done it before. And Nadia set a brand new standard a standard that I like to call excellence, but a standard that the rest of the world like to call perfection. That's me when I was six. I know, I, was, I look cute, but I was a terror on wheels, man. <laughs> I cartwheeled around that living room and handstanded against that wall until my mother nearly pulled her hair out. But I was a natural perfectionist. It's something that I was drawn to. I played hockey. I was taking swimming lessons, I did soccer, I did t-ball, I did all the sports that kids do. And none of them really spoke to me, none of them sung. 
But gymnastics was the one that spoke to me because I had control over how great I could be. On a day-to-day -day basis, I got this great feedback about how I could be better. And as a perfectionist, man, that just fed right into what I wanted. I'm looking at this picture and I'm going, yeah, he's cute, but he could have pointed his toe a little bit more. <laughs> this is a screen cap from an interview I did when I was nine years old. And the reporter, Ron Manns at two and seven here in Calgary, asked me, what's your goal? What's your dream? And I looked at him and rolled my eyes and said, to go to the Olympics and win, hello. <laughs> I knew that that was my goal and it resonated with me. But what I want you to notice in this picture is my hair. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because it took me probably a hundred times brushing my hair over that day to get it to that point where I felt strong enough and confident enough to go on camera and to talk. I was so nervous that day. The perfectionist was winning. This is me when I was 12 years old. I cannot do that anymore. I'm like, ugh! <laughs> And this is when perfection really was boiling up inside of me. And when I was struggling on a day-to-day -day basis with that inner struggle and that inner fight, I didn't know what excellence was. And so I was trying on a day-to-day -day basis to be perfect in school, trying to be perfect, the perfect son, the perfect brother, trying to be perfect at gymnastics. And I was extremely afraid of failing. I was petrified of it, in fact. If I had a competition coming up, I would be ill, physically ill. I couldn't eat. I would have this adrenaline running through my body and I didn't know how to control it. And I would get very quiet and very short with the people that I love the most. My mom would try to talk to me. I'm like, Zip! and she knows now not, not to talk to me on competition day. But when I look at this picture, that's what I think of. I think of that young boy who every day had that struggle and was afraid to face his life and to embrace his life because he was afraid of being something less than perfect. And gymnastics does drive that in you, trying to achieve that perfect 10. The judges are watching you, your coach is watching you, and there's always a small correction. I like to think of it as a, an onion or those babushka dolls from Russia, and you can keep peeling back the layers. And a perfectionist fights with that on a day-to-day -day basis. It runs through their veins and they never feel good enough. They're always rigid because they're afraid to screw up. I didn't make many mistakes in competition, but when I did, I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't know how to handle that loss, that failure, and I would get super disappointed in myself. I would be brought to tears and I would be afraid to go to gymnastics the next day. And when I was in grade seven at 12 years old, I encountered a mental breakdown. I literally could not get out of bed and I couldn't go to school. I couldn't go to gymnastics and my mom decided to um, put me in touch with a sports psychologist, a gentleman here in Calgary named Hap Davis. And Hap and I worked together for many, many years since, since that, uh, that time in my life. And we came up with some great strategies of how to deal with this perfectionistic, um, this perfectionistic expectation that I had within myself. And one of those things, and the one that I apply to my life every single day to this day, because as I say, I'm a recovering perfectionist. It's still there. It still encounters me every day when I'm trying to do anything. But the world's not going to end. The world will not end if it's not perfect. And that's the truth. There's bigger problems in the world. Your own sense of perfection is it's not going to end the world if you aren't perfect. I put this on a poster in my bedroom and every morning when I woke up, that's what I would see. The world's not going to end if it's not perfect. And what this represented and meant to us was taking perfection and reframing it and turning it into something different. And what we decided to turn it into was not an aim for perfection, but an aim for excellence instead. So perfection is when you're concerned with the outcomes and the goals are results-based. I want to win the competition. You aim for being the best. And if you aren't the best standing on that first place, then you are a loser and a failure. But on the opposite end, excellence is when you're concerned with that performance. You set performance goals. Today, my routine is going to look like this. I'm going to land this way. My feet are going to be glued together. They're performance-based and you aim, rather than being the best, you aim to be your best. 
and it's a different thing. You have control. Perfection is about never feeling good enough, saying to yourself, yeah, it was good, but it could have been better. But excellence is about knowing within yourself that you did your best. It's a gut check. It's that feeling. And I know that every single one of us in this room has had it and felt it. When you walk out of a room, out of a test, out of a presentation, out of just a normal circumstance, changing a baby's diaper, man, you're like, yes, that was my best. <laughs> Maybe not the baby's diaper. <laughs> Perfection is about bullying yourself. It's that negative self-talk, and that is so the differentiator between those who can go to the Olympics and win or those who can achieve great things. Those who can go to the Olympics and win and who don't are the ones that are saying to themselves, I'm not good enough. But being focused on excellence is about being kind to yourself, having that positive self-talk. I can. I will. I am good enough. Perfection is about being rigid. It's about being afraid to make a mistake. It's about being afraid of failing. Whereas excellence is about being fluid. It's about being able to be adaptable and to work through whatever you're faced with and to trust within yourself that you will be able to rise to that occasion when that occasion presents itself. Perfection is about defining your self-worth on your results and your achievements thinking that if you lose a competition that you're not worth it. Well, excellence is about defining your self-worth on your performance and your preparation. And on your effort as well. To know that you put in the best you could to be the best you're capable of becoming, that is excellence. You see, perfection is impossible, whereas excellence is something that is attainable. This was me in the splits during my Olympic performance that we watched a little bit earlier. And on this day, this afternoon, I laid in bed and I was visualizing my routine. And I always wondered to myself as a kid, like, what happens on the day when you compete at the Olympics? You know, I'll tell you what happens. You wake up, you go, holy crap, I'm competing at the Olympics today. <laughs> and then you go, all right, well, I'm here. Let's make this great. You eat and you have a nap. My, my friend Steve Messler's in here in the room as well, and I know that athletes love to eat and we love to nap if we aren't training, yes. <laughs> but on this day, I laid down and I had a nap, and I found and I find that the closer you get to the big moment, the, the stronger and louder that inner voice of perfection and that beast gets. So I'm laying there having a nap, trying to take my deep breaths, trying to visualize the perfect routine. I'm all about visualization. And I was so fixated on perfect that day because I knew I had to be close to it that I couldn't get through a visualization of the routine. I kept taking a small hop. I kept taking a step. And I was like, oh my God, if I can't picture it, how the heck am I going to do it? And then I remembered what happened I talked about. And I remembered about being fluid and being adaptable. And so I told myself on that day, today when you go to compete, Trust yourself that you've done the work. Trust yourself that you can be fluid and you can adapt to whatever situation comes. And if you make a small mistake, maybe you'll know it, but cover it up so no, no one else will know. That really helped me feel grounded as an athlete, to feel present, and to be able to feel like I could work it through. And I did a visualization, and I went through the routine, and sure, not everything was perfect, but I made it through, and at the end of that visualization, I felt very proud and I was ready to go. Now this was me <laughs> when I did my dismount at the Olympic Games. And this is a moment that really sticks out and resonates with me about excellence. Because I was fully committed, 100% committed to that landing. A bus could have hit me, and it would have bounced off of me on that day. <laughs> no joke. Clara Hughes, my friend and I, talk about how much energy you put towards the Olympic performance. I was tired for a year and a half after that. <laughs> like literally, like ugh. I put every ounce of energy, every cell of my body was committed to that landing and to being excellent on that day. And on the right, you'll see me screaming. And I don't scream when I do a landing. I'm usually very stoic. Something came out of me and I don't know what it was and I don't know if I'll ever be able to access it again but it was this warrior, this sense of relief, this sense of joy, this sense of happiness, this sense of, I did my best. 
Now, I often get asked, what's my favorite moment from the Olympics, or what did it feel like to stand on the podium? And I'll be honest, this was cool. That medal's a lot heavier in person than you imagine it to be. And this was the moment that I always imagined when I was a kid. But for me, this moment, that's not the moment that sticks out about my Olympic Games. That moment was actually a moment where I found myself trying to be perfect. I'm like, what do I do when I'm on the podium? Where do I look? Because you never really imagine this moment. You imagine everything leading up to that moment. I didn't have time to prepare. So I tried my best to be in it. But when I look back on the Olympics, I don't really think of that moment at all. The moment that I think of is this. This is a moment that I want to re create as many times in my life as I can. And not the moment of hugging my coach, but the feeling that I had and he had inside. We worked together for 16 years, and this was the best hug in the world. It was the best feeling in the world to step off that floor and to know that I had delivered that best routine of my life. And this moment is so special because we didn't know the result. We didn't know if there was a gold medal. We didn't know if there was the score that would put me in first place. All we knew was that we had achieved excellence and that we had done our best. This type of moment I want to recapture and I want to re-energize and replay in my life on a day-to-day -day basis. This is what I aim for. This is excellence. Excellence is not about perfection. Excellence is about having moments like this where you can say to yourself, I did everything I could to be the best that I'm capable of. Where you can say to yourself, I fought the hardest that I could in that moment that it mattered the most to me. That's what excellence is about. Now, in my life, my world has been opened up. A whole new realm of possibilities have been opened up when I learned to let go of perfection and chase excellence. And I hope for everybody in this room that the same will be true to you. Thank you.